Welcome back, cartography fans. The Earth's magnetic field is a wondrous thing. Deep below the crust, below the mantle, there is a liquid outer core of mostly nickel and iron. As this electrically conductive fluid is spun up by the spinning Earth, it generates this magnetic field that looks like a giant bar magnet inside our planet. Thanks to this, cosmic rays are deflected around the Earth's protective magnetosphere. Otherwise, they would make it to the surface and we would have to adapt to more mutations and our atmosphere would get eroded away in short order. So be grateful for your magnetosphere. These days, we depend on GPS for navigation. Perhaps a bit too much. A map and compass will work just as well for those of us who know how to use them. But don't think you can just whip out your compass and have it work perfectly. There are some places on Earth where your north arrow will point east or west, or even south. Why is that? Because the magnetic poles of the Earth are not the same as the rotational poles. We say that every magnet has a north-seeking end and a south-seeking end. Now, on our compasses, we tend to paint the north-seeking end red, and the south-seeking end white, black, or blue. If you think about it, the geodynamo is generating a magnetic field with its south-seeking end in the north of our planet. And this pole exits the Earth's surface, well, it's moving, so whatever I put down as a permanent record here will be obsolete later. It was hanging out on Ellesmere Island since the 1800s, but was last precisely measured offshore in Canadian waters off the island's northwest coast. But it was moving at a snail's pace towards Russian territory, and is probably there by now. And by the way, a snail's pace is about 40 miles per year. But the snail is picking up speed and makes us wonder. So your compass's north-seeking end will point to this south-seeking pole of the geodynamo. And if you are directly west of it, your compass will point east. And if you are north of this pole, your north-seeking needle points south. As I record this... If you are around the 60 degree longitude line south of this pole, your compass will point true north, and you don't have to make any corrections. Most of us aren't, so we need to make a correction. Turn your attention to the bottom of your map to the left of the scale information. Here we see three lines at angles to each other. The left line is labeled GN, which stands for grid north. This is due to projecting a spherical surface onto a flat map. The smaller the scale map, the more distortion will deflect GN from true north, which is represented as the star line. So true north marked by the star is in reference to Polaris, the pole star, and corresponds to the rotational true north north pole of the Earth. To the right of true north, we see 11 degrees marked off to MN, which you might guess means magnetic north. Unfortunately, the older your map is, the less reliable this magnetic declination number will be, so I recommend going to the National Geophysical Data Center's Magnetic Declination Calculator at this web address. Just put in your latitude and your longitude from any corner of your map, or just enter your zip code over here if you're a U.S. citizen, and the Colorado School of Mines zip code is 80401, and we see that it's about 8.5 degrees east of of true north, whereas our map said we were 11 degrees east of true north. We also see the rate at which this declination is drifting to the west. I hope to be teaching students here long enough to finally get down to zero, and thus have no correction to our compasses. But now that we have our declination, we can correct our compasses. Every decent compass has some way to offset the compass dial from the magnetic indicators. In our course, we use this type of compass. And on its cord is a small screwdriver you can use to turn this small inset dial on the back. Turn it until the compass dial is corrected for your declination. We have 8.5 degrees to the east, so we turn this dial 8.5 degrees so the compass dial is pointing west of our magnetic north indicator. Now when we line up north on the dial with the magnetic north indicator, we can turn the compass so the north-seeking arrow is directly over the orienteering arrow, and what we read as north is now true north, not magnetic north off to the right. Job well done. Good work, boys.